You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. My name is Paul. Indeed. Thank you very much. My name is Rob, and this is episode number 867. Yeah, another good question today. I think that uh, this is something that people are trying to kind of break into mapping, but they're new to it, and they're kind of trying to figure out if maybe an older drone that they have will work with the kind of software that they want to use to get the best products they can for clients, etc., and so I'm going to go into that a little bit, maybe try to help. I know it's kind of not as deep as you like to go necessarily, it's okay. it's but okay. it's a good we'll, question. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll knock it out and move on to the next one. So. That's right. But before we do that, uh, are you ready for your part 107 recurrency or recurrent exam? Well, let's find out right now with another question. I think I'm three for four, by the way, and I just jinxed myself on this one by saying that, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I passed. Today's question is brought to you by our friends at the <laughs> Drone U community. If you are going to go take your recurrent exam, study airspace, and test your abilities to pass that test at Drone U. Go to droneu.education. All right. Today's question What action should be taken by the remote pilot in command during an SUAS flyaway event? Number one, immediately notify the NTSB and text Bill English. <laughs> number two, sorry, I added in a little ladder. That's there. it. Uh, number two, immediately notify any and all crew members, bystanders, and ATC if applicable. Immediately notify any and all crew members, local law enforcement personnel, and bystanders. I'll read it one more time. What action should be taken by the remote PIC during an SUAS flyaway event? Immediately notify the NTSB. Immediately notify any and all crew members, bystanders, and ATC if applicable. Immediately notify any and all crew members, local law enforcement personnel, and bystanders. I'm going to say B. You're right. <laughs> Don't you love how like common sense is driving Rob's success right now? This is amazing. <laughs> oh, I find that one so funny. Why did you choose that one? Uh, because if it's a flyaway and, and it's applicable that you're in a, in, a, in a control tower space, then they need to know in case there's planes in the air. That was a horrible, horrible explanation, but you're, you're kind of right. <laughs> so. Damn, that's harsh. <laughs> no, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, if, if you've got a flyaway and your bird is up in the air, there could be planes up there, and so ATC needs to know about it. If you're in controlled airspace, yes, well, agreed. That's, but that's what it says, if applicable, therefore, it's that's why it's B. High five? But you I got did it right. T- I'm going to kick it. <laughs> You got it right. So the other thing, too, is that it would only be applicable if you cause damage. So if you cause damage that was over $500, then it would be applicable. So there are multiple reasons that it could be applicable. Oh, yeah. See, okay. But this goes goes (laughs) back down to what you need to know, what you should know, and what you don't need to know. And you really don't need to know any of those things. So, and Rob... I wasn't trying to be a, a butthole. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I can take it. Okay. What <laughs> anecdotal phrase can help reverse the hazardous attitude of anti-authority? I wrote, I just read this one because I thought it was good for Rob and actually me, not Rob. Number one, rules do not apply in this situation. Number two, I know what I'm doing. Number three, follow the rules. I'll read the question one more time. What anecdotal phrase can help reverse the hazardous attitude of anti-authority. Rules do not apply in this situation. I know what I'm doing. Follow the rules. Seriously? Yes, seriously. That's a question? It's, it's a freaking question. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to answer that because it's, it's offensive. No, 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 no. You have to answer it. <laughs> it's probably a trick question. I'll get it <laughs> it's wrong. It's not a trick question. <laughs> See. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that bombshell, let's get to today's actual question. Uh. Oh, man. My name is Remy Salinas calling from Texas. I'm the owner of Texas Drone Patrol. I'm currently using a Phantom 3 Professional, and I'm about to switch over to PIX4D from Drone Deploy, and I'm wondering if I can use the 3 Professional with PIX4D until I'm able to acquire a Phantom 4 Pro. The renderings have not been up to the standard that I want to deliver. 
So I'm thinking PIX4D might be a better place for me to process and that I can do it on my own computer and um, be able to deliver a better product. All righty. Thank you, Remy, for the question. Do appreciate it. And so are we dealing with a software issue here or is this more of a sensor issue? What's going on here? Is he going to have any success by going to PIX4D? Um, first of all, I mean, you are limited. I mean, this is the, the two things that everyone runs into with mapping issues is that number one, um, the complexity is always simplified. It's not as easy as people think it is. There is a formula. You have to follow it. Uh, if you don't follow the formula, you're not going to get good results. Part of the formula is definitely the sensor. It also has to do with the shutter. Um, it also has to do with how fast the drone is moving. There are so many freaking variables for this. It, it's kind of actually a difficult question to answer, except for the fact that he's never going to get data that's sellable by using that smaller 1 over 2 thirds GoPro sensor that's yeah. in a Phantom 3. He needs a Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, don't confuse the 1 inch sensor with the Mavic 2 Pro and the 1 inch sensor on the. Um, Phantom 4 Pro and X4S, they are very different. By the way, someone had actually pointed out that the sensor on the Mavic 2 Pro is not actually a Hasselblad sensor. It's a Sony sensor with a Hasselblad. Did J you confirm that? Just out of curiosity. I haven't, I haven't confirmed it anywhere else, but I mean, it seems to be a widely known thing that Hasselblad buys Sony sensors because Sony sensors are also in Canon cameras and they're also in Nikon cameras. Because they make a really good sensor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so it's not an issue of the software that you're using and the fact that you're doing it in the cloud currently and that it's going to be better because it's on your computer. That's really not going to solve his issue. No, it's not, because the sensor quality in itself is going to is going to offer less points um, per image, uh, less overlapping, less automatic key points, and less automatic tie points. Right. Okay, so the, you mentioned there's a formula, which is something that we've talked about for a long time. Where can he get the formula? Honestly, so I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because someone had just wrote in and they were like, your intro to mapping class just goes over applications and gives a general uh, ideology of photogrammetry. Well, that's exactly what it's intended for. So if uh, that's too lame for most of you, then just go right into the intermediate mapping because it goes deep and fast. Um, but we are going to be combining those classes into one new class. Uh, that will have that formula. Um, and I have to say that even from the intermediate mapping class, I've learned things that I want to put in the class that I think would make it so much better. And the praise that we've been getting since the fly-in about our mapping classes that were at the fly-in just totally uh, vindicates uh, what we're doing and how we're doing it over here for me. So, yeah. so um, the answer to the question is to become a member. And, and just, in time especially, I mean, there's... Great stuff there already that's going to teach you the foundational stuff, but there's a lot more coming as it relates to mapping and that True. formula. The, the short answer to his question is you need a better sensor to get better data. Transferring between uh, drone deploy and PIX40 is not going to change anything other than, yes, you do have more variables that you can play with and manipulate in PIX4D that you cannot do in uh, drone deploy, but that's not going to matter in this in this case because again it comes down to, um, you know, the sensor. So right, and there's a lot okay. that goes into that. We have a whole show uh, on the podcast from I believe it was like July 5th um, that where on God and I talk about just. I mean, we really go into detail about even though you need a big sensor, you need the right sensor, you can't have a sensor with rolling shutter, you need a calibrated sensor. Like, there's so much that goes into it. It's unreal. Yeah. Photogrammetry is a science. It's not an art. Uh, you know, people, it, it's funny because On God is like, it's an art and a science because you can make beautiful models that are not accurate at all. Um, and you can make accurate models that aren't really beautiful. So, uh, can you make an accurate model that is beautiful? I think you can with the right equipment. Okay. Sony A7 III. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So ultimately, as we've been saying all along, it really depends on what your needs are and what your client needs. True. In addition to that, accuracy also comes down to things that have nothing to do with your drone. Hmm. Like ground control points. Right. So. Lots to it. Yes, there are a lot to it. So Awesome. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.